Hi guys, welcome along. Uh, part five now of this build. This will be the final part. And uh, now we're going to be looking at doing some uh, weathering and basically finishing her up. Um, what I'm going to do is start off by giving it a flory wash with the uh, flory dark dirt. This is very old. This is you can see I marked on a new February 2011, so it's eight years old. Um, I don't use a lot of it basically because I don't finish a lot of kits. So. I'm a bad bad boy. So this has all been gloss coated before and then I've gone over the decaled areas with uh, another layer of gloss. So I'm going to put this on just before I put a matte coat on. Um, if you, I've got to finish the guns as well, if you actually use this on a matte varnish or a matte finish it will stain the surface because it's almost, the matte paint is almost kind of porous. This is basically clay suspended in solution. So if you put it on a gloss surface, it will kind of break up almost like when you paint on oily, oily plastic. It's got no surface tension. So what I'm going to do is just paint this all over, let it dry, and then I'm going to rub it all off with a cloth. Um, and all I'm trying to do is just get some sort of detail into the, the, the control surfaces and, you know, around the edge of the, just give it a sort of bit of a, a dirty sort of worn look. Then I'll give it a matte varnish and then I'll do some pin washes and stuff with it then. And I'll take you with me all the way through. So um, I've still got the finish now. I've still got to add the mirror. I've got to add the, um, the aerial post, the antenna wire, undercarriage, spinner. Um, there's, there's lots of bits and pieces to do. But the trouble is if I had any of that now, I'm likely to break it. I mean, when I wipe all this off, I'm going to be basically taking a piece of towel, wiping it off. I'm going to knock things off. So it's just best left leave that till the end. And then weather it all in afterwards but I'll show you all that so I'm just gonna dip this in here you notice I've got a bit of paper on it, it says flory wash the reason for that is if you use a brush which has got um, acrylic thinners in it or whatever then you are likely to ruin your flory wash um, it makes it break down so it's best to um, it's best to, to not actually put anything acrylic in it uh, or mix it up. So I just keep a brush dedicated for flory wash. I use this for all the colours. I've only got the dark dirt, the black and the white. But um, you can see here, I'm just brushing it on all over liberally. Uh, you've probably all seen this before. You've probably seen Phil do it on his videos. Um, but it's, um, it's good stuff for a really quick, a really quick overall effect to... Uh, you know, basically just to highlight panel lines, rivets, anything like that. It's it's great for that sort of thing. Um, I probably wouldn't do this to a modern jet uh, because it would probably be a bit too much. But on, on something like a World War II aircraft that, you know, they had matte paint. The paint wasn't very high quality. Um, it stained very easily. I've actually got a World War II Jeep, a real one, and I can tell you the, the paint on that, where the original paint is, it's a very, very matte, very, very enamel-like paint that isn't very, it chips easily. But they're saying that, it's, it's nearly 80 years old, so. But, um, yeah, um, it wasn't very good. I mean, if, if you look about, I've, I've been doing a lot of research on the Lancasters, obviously, because of my builds. And apparently the early Lancasters had a... Um, the, the black paint was a very, very matte paint that was very, very thin and wore off very easily. There's there's pictures of, of the, the fronts of Lancasters where the paint is literally just worn off or it's been rubbed away for hardly any contact whatsoever. So um, I'm waffling, aren't I? So I'm going to get this all done and I'll come back and show you when I do the wipey off bit and then... Uh, We'll go from there. Right, so that's had about, I don't know, 20 minutes to go off. Um, and you can see it's pretty much dried out now. So with these undercarriage doors, I'm just going to show you, this is one I've already done. Um, so with these, I'll just do them with a cotton bud. So you can rub at it like this, and it doesn't really do a lot. If I just wet it on my tongue, just literally, just damp, you can see that the, that it comes off really easily and just leaves the detail behind 
in the uh, in the rivets. So if this is positive rivets, you could just rub it one way and it would leave streaks. And the other thing is you can do, you can play with it. Now, if I want to make vertical streaks, I can just do that and make some vertical streaks. So there you can see how easy this wash is to use. And I believe it's relatively safe. It certainly doesn't smell. Um, it's not it's not a chemical it's not a solvent um, it's 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 great and then on the wing I've got the dry cloth here I haven't wetted it at all I could just basically rub over and just leave the dirt behind and you can see that where there was a lot of gloss here you see it rubs off quite easily and then when we get into this area here where it was a little bit duller or more dull should I say you can see it's a bit harder to remove. So what you do is get a little bit of moisture. I've just got my pot of water here. I'm just gonna just add a bit of moisture to that cloth and then wipe and it comes off a lot easier as you can see there. And it's a good practice is to always rub in the direction of flow. So rub it so that any streaks that are left behind look like they've you know they've they've happened they're dirt that's been blown off the wing um, rather than having you know streaks or circular motions sometimes obviously you need to get into places but then once you've done that just go over and you can see there already you've got like a, a, a weathered appearance on there and on the tip you can see the dark dirt shows up in the green as a you know it sort of accentuates the rivets now one of the problems with doing this this is part of the reason I've used this if your decals don't go down don't pull down properly you won't get that effect in your decals so what you end up with is, is decals that don't have that effect in now you can see we've got something there around that gun access door uh, but other than that there's there's nothing really in the decal at all you can see on the paintwork there is so if you use if I'd use like a black or a very um, you know or a white um, wash then it would stick out like a sore thumb that the decals all blue and shiny and the rest of it isn't so that's one of the other beauty of this dark dirt color it's almost like a like a kind of um, concrete color there we go I've just wetted that cloth and you can see it just rubs off it's totally easy one of the best cloths for doing this is if you've got old t-shirts um, don't ever throw old t-shirts away they uh, they make wonderful material for polishing and stuff and, and for doing decals and all sorts um, paper towels are good but they're not so good for the environment and they're also um, they can leave lots of fluff and bits behind which isn't necessarily good and you can see in there you see that the area in there around the engine you get this dirty overall look and I can you, rest assured in a minute a minute for you half a day for me you when you see this actually with some um, mat on it you'll see what a difference it makes and how it really really adds to the overall effect and I'll just show you a bit on the underside and then uh, I'll let you go back to sleep you can see here I'm wiping away and I've just noticed I haven't I've forgotten to do that touch up that white paint where I had to cut the decal remember from my last part and you can see there I mean on the sky color on the bottom you can see how it really really works and shows up the shows up the panel lines and the rivet detail beautifully um, it's uh, yeah, it's a lovely effect you can see there and then one of the downsides can be that's not so bad if I'd done some bad work with this seam the seam is there the um, the wash would pick up that seam but it's not there it's, it, the, the seam is there where I've scribed those two lines there that's where the seam is so uh, yeah I'm happy with that Right, there we are, all done, uh, all wiped over with a cloth now and just given a basic 
dirty patina really um, you can see on the back there the rivet detail hasn't shown up at all so if you look back at my how to rivet you need to push harder um, so basically yeah you can see that the, the, the it's picked out all the details on the elevators it's picked out the details on the rudder um, you know I've got some blotchiness there I want to get rid of so damp cotton bud over the top just like that gone and one thing I would say um, well there's two tips really two golden tips to use in this stuff make sure you're happy before you put any matte coats or anything on make sure you're happy with the effect you've got because once you put a, a matte coat over this stuff you won't be able to rub it off anymore um, and the other thing is don't do this if you haven't gloss coated your decals because what will happen I don't know what that is there something uh, something a bit weird so there's something stuck to it um, what will happen if you uh, that was a piece of decal film I think um, if you don't gloss coat your decals what will happen is it will pick up the edge of the decal and even possibly go under it and it will, it will highlight the edge of like especially with these stencils like on here it will highlight the edge of all of them so make sure you've got a decent gloss coat on all your decals before you use this or any any form of wash actually because what will happen is if you if you don't if you don't get it off you'll end up with a um with a black line around your decals because that's what it's designed to do it's designed to go and stay in any little corners or crevices you know like all around here like it's done you need to be careful with decals because it will actually stay on there so there we go so i'm happy with that for now um, I'll leave that now for a few hours just to see there might be some wet areas and um, and I'll make sure that I'm happy with it before I put a matte coat on it and then when I matte coat it I'll get you guys back and you can see how I do that I'll probably use um, I'll probably use this one which is the AK ultra varnish matte it's very very good stuff it goes on very very matte but it's not I wouldn't advise it if you're going to do some heavy weathering because it tends to sort of I think it can lift um, if you're going to do some heavy weathering I'd go for the um, Tamiya XF85 is it the matte varnish every time but the beauty is that stuff the uh, that stuff is very very matte and it's another one of those just chuck it in the uh, airbrush and blow it on you know so there's no fuss no mixing really easy to use oh uh, and I use the um, here we go you can see both sides of the wheels I've used the dark dirt wash on there on the tires as well and you can see it dulls them down nicely as well I think remember these are vinyl tires so um I'm you know pretty pleased with that it looks quite good up against the doors it's gonna look quite good so um yeah so uh, I'll uh, get the exhaust painted up and bits and pieces and then I'll see you in a minute la, 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 la. Da, 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 da. hello guys right I've painted the exhausts um, I first gave them a coat of matte black, then I've given them a coat of Gunn's Metalizer Dark Iron, and I'm just now quickly polishing them with, um, with a cotton bud, as you can see, and that gives them a, a nice shiny finish for what's to come. Now, what I thought I'd do, I've been looking at pictures of these exhausts online, and they all seem to have like a, like a titanium coloured sort of in the background and a sort of light brown staining and, and a, you know so I thought what I'll do is I'll give them a filter a brown filter this is a AK filter for tanks it's very old uh, as you can see um, then I'm going to dry brush them with Humber 83 uh, which is going to give us the I've noticed they've got us on all the edges there's like a very light brown almost white um, staining from the from the petrol uh, and then give them a black wash to see how it all looks. So let's um, start by giving them this filter. Clean the brush off a bit. And that should give me the look I'm looking for. And obviously then I've got some pigments as well I can use to get the, um, the smoke staining. So that's uh, on there like that. And that should give us like the, the, what I'm looking for is that brown, 
brown yet metallic colour. If you guys know how to do this, please let me know. I've never, I don't recall ever doing this before. As I've said so many times, I don't tend to bloody finish anything. So, right, they've had a fi that filter now. So I'll leave them to dry for a little while. In fact, I might try. that filter on tires no oh yeah it might might work let's see yeah I'm just brushing it on there and then wiping it off with my finger okay I've now that's all dry um, so I've just given them a quick wipe over in a direction of flow with a cotton bud and that will just bring back the, the metallic sheen on the uh, highlighted areas. Now I've just, rather than fully stir this, I've just got some some of the dregs off the bottom of the tin up to the edge. Most of my humble paints are probably 30, 40 years old now. Um, 35 years I'd say. So I'm just gonna get this all pretty much nothing left on the brush hardly at all. And then just gently dry brush this to highlight the I'll just want to highlight all the corners all the edges so we'll see how this looks let's get some more paint on the brush get it off again and just gently brush and dry brush all the corners like so and I think there you can see we're starting to get the sort of effect that I'm looking for starting to get that metallic but sort of brown sheen it's, it's hard to describe I think I know what I'm getting there um, so now the next thing is, let's get that lid back on there. I'll have to sort that in a minute, that lid needs cleaning. Um, and another little tip guys, if you haven't seen me tell you this before, if you've got brushes that you use with oil paints and your oil washes and stuff, keep them separate. Don't contaminate your acrylics with oils and stuff. Um, I always keep them separate and then Otherwise, I mean, you can thing is, you could thoroughly clean this brush in chemicals and God knows what, and then use it. But you're better off just keep the brushes separate from oils and acrylics, and then you have no no worry about it then. And particularly with this floral wash, don't put anything uh, any brushes with anything on in there because if you um if you start introducing acrylics and stuff to these washes, they they really don't like it. So I've got my this is my floral wash brush. You can see it's got a label on it. So I just clean that off into the black wash. Just brush that on. You can see it doesn't much like the um, the the glossy surface. As I said before, when I did the aircraft, it kind of all peels away. So I'm just going to brush this on. Hopefully, this will get in all the corners and crevices and stuff. And then once it dries. What I'm hoping is I'll wipe it off and it will leave the the brown sort of stained. So what I'm hoping for is, is black down in the corners and then brown and metallic on the exposed areas. I mean, if it doesn't work, I'd, hey, I'll try something else. But... um. Whatever happens, if this, even if this doesn't work, I'm going to put it on film anyway. I'm not going to edit it out because I'm thinking about doing a video as well on uh, how not to build a model. There's millions of videos on YouTube about how to build a model. I'm thinking about doing one how not to. Right, so now I'm going to have a go with some pigments. That's how they've come out. You can see it there. Um, I'm not over the moon with it. 
but you've got the brown, you've got the black, you've got the the um, the dry brushing. So I've got this uh, industrial city dirt pigment, which hopefully will give me this light brown tinge I'm looking for. I'm just going to brush that in so it goes into all the crevices. By the way, these are pretty dry. Um, there will be a slight amount of moisture left in the corners and in the undercuts from the uh, from the floury wash. But um, other than that, they're pretty dry. I'm using a very, very knackered old brush, as you can see. You really don't want to be using good brushes on pigments because um, it just destroys them. So there we've got that. Now I've got Vietnam Earth Black. Let's give it go with some standard rust. Let's see if we can give it a little bit of a, a red tinge. Let's see how that looks. All I'm doing now is just basically putting it on the surface and I'm not trying to get it into the nooks and crannies. I'm just trying to get out some embedded into the surface. There we go. What do you think of that? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's starting to look better. Maybe it needs a matte, a matte varnish on it after all this. Maybe I should just fit them to the model and um, and weather them actually on the model. I think I put a bit too much on there. Yeah. But now, a bit of black. Let's get a smaller brush. I'm using my oil brushes for this. I don't want to use my acrylic brushes. A little bit of black soot in behind all these. And that should give us a bit of a better appearance. I don't know. I'll just brush over that way. You see, whatever I do, I get this metallic sheen back, which I think is what I might be fighting against. Maybe I don't want that metallic sheen. Maybe I want to matte varnish them. So I don't know what you think of that, guys. Um... I think maybe they look okay, as if they were sort of very newish. I think they need more. I think I'll stick them on a model and we'll go from there. Right. Right, guys. Um, I've given it a, a, a wipe off again with a wet cloth, just to make sure. As I said earlier, if you put your matte coat on and then you find some areas of that floury wash that you don't like, it's too late. So you've only got now to do it. And if you find any blotches of floury wash anywhere or any areas that are a bit heavy or areas that are a bit light you know go over them again um, but once you put this on once you put the flat varnish on it's too late um, anybody who's known me for a while you remember my phantom I built easy rocking mama 30 second scale Tamiya uh, F4E F4E yeah um, phantom and if you look at one of those pictures around the back end about here, you'll see that I've got floury wash there, a splodge of it, and I've varnished over it and I can't get rid of it now. So yeah, you'll see it on that on that model. I spent a lot of time and a lot of money on that model, and then that sort particularly that little area of it is uh, is messed up. So so yeah, that's how I learned the hard way. So um yeah, be careful with your um be careful with your with your floury wash and make sure you've got it all off where you want it or you know if you want to put more on as I say put more on 
and you can see there you see there's some in there which is a bit e even with a damp cloth I'm still working at it it's coming off but it's leaving a lovely streaky effect behind which is nice check the wing leading edges make sure they're all good it's good how these decals have gone into the holes for the machine guns as well so I think we can say safely say that is now ready for a uh, ready for a um, a matte coat. What I do need to do is mask that light there and that light there. Um, obviously, rubbing off the flory wash. I've, I I did cover them with uh, my Vallejo liquid mask. And while I'm on the subject, microset. I went to Antics yesterday to get my Revell Spitfire, which I did, and I thought I'll get some microset while I'm there. And they told me it's gone up to six pounds fifty. I said, "What? I, I, that's no way." And everywhere else I've seen it, it's like three ninety nine. I mean, you can get two bottles on Amazon for eleven pounds. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, there's just no way. It's ridiculous. It's just not worth six pound fifty for what it does. So I've got this one to try. Um, I'm Omig. Um, I, I can't stand their paint, but this smells exactly the same as the micro set so we'll try that on the next model we do and hopefully it will get some good results um but i'm certainly not paying 650 for this what i have done i went onto e models and e models still have it at 399 or 349 or whatever it was so i ordered a couple of bottles there this bottle here has probably lasted me 10 years so they should um those two bottles should last me until me coughing so uh let's um let's uh, hopefully this one will work because it's actually a, a better way because you've got a glass bottle which is less easy to knock over and it's got a brush as well so that'll be um hopefully this was 4.99 this one so hopefully um this works because i quite prefer that and in, and in fact even if it doesn't work, I'll probably pour this into an empty microset bottle and use this for microset because having the brush in the cap is so much more handy. So uh, there we go. So I need to get on and mask these lights and then we'll get some matte coat on there. Just a little by the by here. I've got some of the guns, the Mr. Hobby um, masking fluid, which is a lot thicker than the Viejo. And I just remember I saw something a while ago on uh, YouTube, a guy was using it. I'll give it a go and it seems to work what you do is you put a dollop of it on and then as it starts to go off what you do is using the end of a cocktail stick you just push it away from the area you don't want to mask onto the area you do mask i think it was um i can't think of his name there's the japanese guy that builds the amazing 30 second scale aircraft he's done the f-15 and the f-14 um on his um on his youtube channel I can't think what it's called now, detail or something or other. Um, and he did it on the uh, cockpit and it really does appear to work. You just push the mask away, you can also move it back down like that, you see? You just manipulate it and into where you want it. <laughs> so it seems to work. So I could push it away from the, the paint there and then move it over there. And it seems to go like sort of like jelly in a jelly state for a little while and then it properly sets you can tell when it's set because it turns like a dark green color almost like the um the tamia the, the the clear green that that color okay so now it's time to uh <clears throat> give her a cup of matte varnish i've just gone over with an airbrush and blown it off um got all the dust off i think um it's not really ideal conditions doing this on camera, but you know, if it was if it was my Lancaster, I wouldn't be doing it on camera. But seeing as it's just this old thing, then uh, then I will. Um, so I'm going to use this AK Ultra Matte Varnish, and it, this stuff is 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 it's easy to use. I'll show you. You just shake the bottle, yeah, and then put it in your airbrush. Job done, and that's it. I'm just going to spray some on there, make sure we're all good to go. And then what I can do is just do these bits here. And just give them a decent covering. You don't have to 
be careful how you put it on. You don't have to put it on thin light coats. You just put it on and you can see when I blow this back, you will see that it is absolutely dead matte. It's really good stuff. Um, really good stuff if you want a dead matte finish. I'm just blowing that off there. You can see I've got so much on it's pulled, but it doesn't matter because... And this is what I like. I like products that are easy to use, um, particularly on models that you're not too worried about. There you go, and that is absolutely dead flat, if you can see that there. Not an ounce of sheen on it at all. So that's what you want. And then with actually spraying the, the model, I'll start on the tail plane. So just put on a light coat. And I want it wet, because if you don't put it on wet, you won't see that it's actually on there. Um, Will Patterson has just done a video about spraying techniques. And what he's actually said is exactly what I do. When somebody sprays a car, they don't go like this. They don't go like this over it. They go like this. In fact, what they do with the spray car, they do this. I can actually, I can actually spray a car. I've done a few, and you you keep the gun parallel to the surface. You don't do this, and you go off by the side. Um, and what you want to be careful of is you don't leave patches behind. So that's why I'm putting a wet coat on, so I can see where I've been. And then you can dry it back with the airbrush, and you can see. But this is absolutely dead flat. We've got some silvering there. So I'm going to have to deal with that. I just knew these decals were going to be a pain in the ass. I'll probably just chop that one off. Um, yeah, we've got that no push decal there. There's another one there that's got some silvering. So yeah, they're going to be an absolute pain in the ass. I think I'll just remove them. Right, so there she is with a, a mat coat. Um, this is the AK mat coat as I showed you. Uh, I've gone over some of these decals and ripped the, you know, sort of tried to cut them up a bit and rip off the, um, the part that was silvering. It's been a kind of success, but it seems that you're chasing your tail as you do one bit, another bit appears. So, you know, if, if this was a decent model, um, I would be ripping these decals off and starting again because they're absolute awful. They're crap. They're totally awful. Um, I'm not even sure they're stuck down because, you know, as I say, you, you go along, you do a bit, and then another bit appears. Um, like that bit there on the edge of that, that wasn't there before. I'm sure it wasn't. So I might do a bit more picking at it. I don't know. Luckily, the ones on the side have gone on pretty well. Um, there's a bit of silver in there in those rivets. You know, hey-ho. Um, but yeah, these decals are crap. So if you're gonna, if you've got a Hobby Boss kit um, of this era, then um, you might want to replace the decals. If you've got a more modern Hobby Boss kit, maybe try a couple of scrap decals first, because I could tell you now. I mean, if if, I, if this was a decent model, if it was like a eighty pound model, or if this was my P sixty one that I've got, the Hobby Boss P sixty one or the B twenty four, I would be gutted. As, the, as it is with this, I don't really care. It was a fun build and it's turned out to be not very fun. Um, so anyway, there we go. Um, I had a mark there. I, I did put some more, um, some of the floury wash on there. And I had a mark, I had to rub through the the, the, um, the primer, the, um, the matte varnish and, and rub that mark away. So I've got to redo that wing. But um, no, the, the AK stuff is very, very forgiving. Just make sure you shake it properly. Um, the, the, there's some white. You get the white sludge in the bottom. You know that's what your your matting agent is. So yeah. Um, overall, it's all done. Um, if you want to see what the exhaust look like, where are they? Here they are. Um, in case you're wondering, um, just slot that one in there, and you can see they look pretty pretty good I think um, you, know, you put them on with the prop of the spinner and uh, yeah I think they look pretty good 
I think I'll call this pretty much done really I mean I, I probably would will do some more floory wash on it and we've got the wheels on we've got the prop on we've got the exhausts on I've added these little brass tubes to the end of the guns they don't look anything like some guns I've seen on the uh, on the internet so I don't know what they are mirrors on there the aerial mast is there pito tube underneath wheels on front and back and the exhaust staining is done just sort of pretty gently I couldn't really find any really badly burnt up pictures so um, I've just done that's just some Tamiya light grey very very thin and just sort of gently blown on with the airbrush really um, keep finding more silver in which is such a disappointment I haven't taken off the masking or any of the masking here on the lights yet because I think I'm gonna to have to give it another flat coat I'm gonna try and get rid of some of this more of this silver in um, but it's so flat every time I touch it I leave um, white marks you know from my fingers where I've been sanding and stuff so I guess I need to wear a pair of gloves now if I'm gonna handle it but you know um, I guess it looks a bit like a Spitfire doesn't it and there she is I'm gonna call this done um, I would probably spend a bit more time on the weathering and stuff but um, really I've had a cuts full of it um, the canopy looks to me the canopy looks pathetic uh, it's way over um, it's like a huge great bulge on it um, the positive side I've added the antenna there got the mast up here it's had some more about varnish I've painted the guns uh, I've painted the lights the ID lights um, removed the masking obviously from the canopy and the light on the back there moved it from the light on the bottom so um yeah all in all um it was supposed to be a fun build it hasn't really been that fun the the, the decals just ruined it i mean the, the the shape issues i was kind of getting to sort of get over the shape issues but then when i remove the um, masking from the canopy you can see when you look at the shape of the the back of the spine there and you can see that rear the rear part of the canopy it looks awful so yeah i mean i'm gonna i think i'm gonna give this to a model shop just to stick in their window um i don't really want to see it in my display cabinet i mean the decals like i say i keep going on about it they've ruined it for me because you you've lost all the panel detail they're just like flat stuck on discs um you know if this had if this had been a tamiya or something i'd have ripped all the decals off and started again um maybe given it a coat of dental got all the paint off I don't know um, but uh, yeah the way it is I mean with its shape issues and everything I'm just you know yeah it, I'm gonna call it done um, I'm sure some of you guys will think it's great I've learned a few things um, uh, I mean I, I some I've never done before and I tried I remember seeing Phil Flory do it I put some of his um, dark dirt wash around the fuel filler and then blew it with an airbrush and sort of looks like spilt fuel been blown back um trying to hide all the silver on these decals on the top and also the the, the dusty finish is kind of a bit of annoy, annoying um i don't think i'll use that ak um that ak flat varnish again it's um it, it kind of just keeps coming back it's really weird it's like it's dusty like a very fine dust on it and then it just reappears, you rub it off and it reappears. It's um, very strange. So, um, yeah, we'll call that done. I'm sorry it didn't turn out better, guys. But, uh, you know, hopefully um, hopefully you like it. Uh, hopefully it's been a good little build series. What's this? this is part five, isn't it? So there's only five parts. It's not too much to look at. But, um, yeah, on the whole, it's a model that I thought oh, I haven't painted the pitot tube, have I? Um, it's a model that I finished, which is a goal for me. <laughs> so I'll get that pito tube painting as well, I think. I can't have that like that. So um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. This isn't my normal sort of build. Um, I think my builds are normally better than this. Um, once, they, I, I, once the decals, well, if you look back to part four, is it with the decals? I lost, I lost, um, lost all will to, to finish it then really. It could have easily gone back in the box, but no, I wanted to get it done. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to uh, see you all soon. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And if you have subscribed, 
thank you very much really really appreciate it and uh i'll think of something else to build now bye bye